this video, we're going to look at absolute value functions, and we're also going to do some of the transformations that we looked at um, in the previous video with the linear functions. So to start off, a function that contains an absolute value expression is called an absolute value function. And just like we had a parent function with our linear functions, we also have a parent function with absolute value functions. And our parent function is just listed right here as the f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. So over here we have what the graph would look like. So absolute value graphs are very easy to identify. They look like a V, right? Absolute value. Um, and so that's nice. Um, our parent function is listed here. Um, another th important thing to note about a absolute value function is that there's a point called a vertex. So the vertex is the point where the graph changes direction. And on the parent function, the vertex is located at the origin. So it's a lot easier to see transformations on an absolute value function uh, because you can kind of use the vertex as a point of reference, right? How has the vertex moved? Because we know it's supposed to start at the origin on our parent function. A couple other characteristics to note about an absolute value function. The domain is all real numbers. So remember domain is left to right, our x values. So if we look at our absolute value parent function up here, notice that we have both sides or, you know, the parts of the V that make up our graph are extending right and left um, in for forever, right? So that's all real numbers. But if you notice our range, our range is going to be just values that are greater than or equal to zero because our absolute value graph just goes up, okay? Now, once we start transforming, maybe we do a reflection, that could change our range a little bit. Um, or if we do a vertical translation down, then that could adjust our range as well. So we're gonna look at a couple examples where we graph some absolute values. So two examples to be exact. The first one, we're gonna look at some translations. And then in the second example, we're gonna look at a stretch, a shrink, and a reflection. So for example one, we see we wanna graph g of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus four. So I'm gonna start off and in red, I'm gonna graph my absolute value parent function, okay? So if we think about our parent function, it's just absolute value of x, right? So Whatever x is, y is the absolute value of that. So for example, that would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, or negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, so on and so forth. So this is just our absolute value parent function. Okay, so now in blue, we're going to graph our g of x function, which is the absolute value of x plus 4. So if you think back to our previous video about transformations, Hopefully we recognize that this should be a vertical translation four units up. That plus four is happening outside the absolute value, out, outside the absolute value. And so in that case, it's vertical and it is what it looks like. We're just gonna go up four. So what does this mean? This means put in your X value, take the absolute value and then just add four. So if X is zero, absolute value of zero is zero, plus four would move our vertex up one, two, three, four units. And so what this is gonna do is just move each of our points up four units, okay? So this blue graph right here will represent our g of x function, okay? Which is just absolute value of x plus four, okay? So we wanna compare it so we can say this was a vertical translation up four. And we wanna look at the domain and the range. So the domain here did not change. This is all real numbers. That's a symbol that means all real numbers. But if you notice, our range did change. Now our lowest point where our vertex is located is at y is four. So now our range would be y is greater than or equal to four because we moved our graph up four units. Okay, now for the next function, we're gonna graph h of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus three. So think back to our translations that we looked at in the previous video. That subtraction, that minus three is happening inside the absolute value. So it's a horizontal translation, horizontal translation. And remember with horizontal, it's opposite of what it looks like. So this says minus three. So really we need to go right three units, okay? And then we'll look at our domain and our range after we do the graph, okay? So remember, starting from our parent function, we're gonna move each of our points three units to the right. So our vertex is gonna be one, two, three. And then now here will be our other points. Okay, so now we draw our lines here to make our V. And now we have our H of X function. Okay, so once again, we notice our domain 
still going to be all real numbers, even though we shifted the graph to the right because the arrows extend infinitely in both directions. And also our range will be the same. Y is still greater than or equal to zero because we didn't move our graph up or down, okay? All right, so if we think about plugging in an X value here, think about where the vertex moved to. So at the vertex, the X value is zero. So zero minus three would be negative three, but then absolute value means it would be at positive three. And that's why we move to the right three, okay? All right, our next example is going to deal with some stretches, some shrinks, um, or and possibly a reflection. Okay, so now this time, I'm gonna go ahead and graph in pink our parent function. Okay, so this one is just absolute value of x with the vertex located at the origin. And we'll call this f of x. So f of x is just equal to the absolute value of x, okay? So now in red, we're gonna graph t of x is equal to one half times the absolute value of x. So now we've got multiplication, so we should be thinking stretch or, stretch or shrink, vertical, horizontal, right? Somewhere along there. This multiplication is happening outside the absolute value. So it's gonna be vertical because it's happening to our output value. It's not happening directly to x. So here we're gonna say a vertical and vertical is what it looks like. One half is small, so this is gonna be a shrink and it's by a factor of one half, okay? So what this means is we're gonna take our x values, take the absolute value, and then just multiply by one half, okay? So for our vertex, when x is zero, absolute value is still zero, zero times one half is still zero. So our vertex doesn't move on this one. But when x is one, we take the absolute value, one half of that would be one half, okay? So same thing over here, all right? Now when x is two, absolute value is two, half of that would be one. So that's gonna be the same thing that happens when x is negative two, okay? When x is three, half of that would be one and a half. Same thing when x is negative three. And then when x is four or negative four, y would be two. Okay, so now we see our absolute value graph. And as you can see, it was a vertical shrink, right? So our graph got, um, it, it's now opening wider because we shrunk it, okay? And so this is our T of X function, okay? All right, and now we're gonna look at P of X. So this is negative three times the absolute value of X. So notice we have two transformations happening. The three is gonna be a vertical stretch and it is by a factor of three. And then we have that negative in there, which means we are going to reflect over the x-axis because that's happening to our outputs, which means reflect over the opposite axis, which would be the x-axis, okay? All right, so once again, we're gonna start with the origin point where our vertex is located. If x is zero, absolute value is zero, zero times negative three is still zero. So our vertex, once again, is staying in the same place. All right, now when x is one, Absolute value would be one, and then we multiply by negative three. So we're at one, negative one, two, and three. And the same thing would happen when x is negative one, okay? When x is two, absolute value is two, multiplied by negative three would be negative six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And the same thing would happen when x is negative two, and we'll stop right there, okay? So now we can see a couple things, fix that. First of all, obviously our graph is now opening down and that's because we had a reflection, okay? But another thing you notice is it was vertically stretched, right? So it's more narrow now, okay? So that's going to affect our domain and our range. So for the P of X function, our domain now, once again, our domain, those rays off of our absolute value graph are going to extend in both directions. So this is still all real numbers. But now our range is going to change. Uh, the symbol is going to change, right? It usually is y is greater than or equal to zero, but we've reflected it. So now it should be y is less than or equal to zero because we're going down. All right, so let's go back to our t of x function and let's say our domain. Now we're looking at the red function, still all real numbers, and our range y is greater than or equal to zero. Didn't change there, okay? And that's how we graph absolute value functions with some transformations.